I received a call from my dear friend Angie that her computer failed. So this was an emergency trip to Kingman, Arizona, as she loves to buy and return sewing machines online. So I spent the first night on the BLM land just outside of Oatman overlooking Bullhead City in Laughlin, Nevada, one of my favorite places. I woke up in the morning to the super bloom. Wow, was this amazing. A super bloom is a rare desert botanical phenomenon that happens only in California and Arizona in which an unusually high proportion of wildflowers whose seeds have lain dormant for years in the desert soil germinate and blossom roughly at the same time. The phenomenon is associated with an unusually wet rainy season. A similar phenomenon also occurs annually during the wet season along the arid west coast of South Africa. The conditions under which a super bloom can occur are exceptional. The desert must remain dry, the rain must be heavy enough to penetrate deep into the soil matrix in order to reach a majority of the dormant seeds of flowering plants. Next, the ground in which the seeds lie must warm slowly, following the soaking rain. The desert must have enough cloud cover to both shield the soil from intense daytime desert heat and to insulate it from the overnight freezing temperatures. Finally, once the newly germinated plants have reached the surface of the soil, the desert must remain undisturbed by strong winds which could uproot the plants and or damage the young shoots. The rare concatenation of these events is which makes a super bloom such an extraordinary occurrence. And what's a trip to Oatman without a visit from the wild burls? They are the descendants brought here by the miners in the late 1800s. When the miners no longer needed them, they were turned loose. Each morning, they come into town looking for food. They wander the streets and they are great for tourists. Burl pellets and carrots are for sale at many of the shops. The burls will eat all day if you feed them. Shortly before sunset, they wander back to the hills for the night. After sorting out Angie's computer issues, I headed back to California with a trip through the high desert. About 25 miles west of Needles, California, on Route 40, there's an exit called Mountain Springs Road. If you take that, you can go on the original Route 66, which is closed, do not enter, well, just go around the signs. Anyhow, it's a good fun drive with nobody around. The reason this section of Route 66 is closed is a number of years ago, floods came through the desert and wiped out a lot of the bridges. But there are dirt roads that take you around each bridge. I made this trek in the past and it's on a video titled Grand Canyon West Rim and Route 66. During this trek I'm going to be stopping at a lot of the abandoned places along this stretch of Route 66 because my destination is to go to Amboy and in to hike into Amboy Crater. Construction for Route 66 started around 1926. In the late 50s to early 60s, they built Highway 40 from Barstow to Needles and beyond to the Arizona border. What you see out there in the distance is Highway 40. When that opened, all the towns along Route 66 slowly dried up. On this trek, we're going to check out all the things to see on this long forgotten highway. I noticed a pullout on the opposite side of the highway so I did a little u-turn and went back to check it out. This landmark is dedicated to the area around Route 66. There's a brief history of Route 66 engraved in these plates. Information about the wilderness in the area as well as the different types of plants and animals and information regarding the local Native Americans. Wonder what we have here. Let's go take a look. Route 66 was loaded with different types of restaurants, gas stations, motels along the route, especially back in the old days when you needed a lot of water for those radiators, especially driving through the desert. It looks like this used to be a restaurant. Yeah, for sure. Boy, I bet it was really something in its day. 
traveling along this section of Route 66, there's still people living out here. And I'm sure that's why the roads are graded when you go around the uh, bridges that are no longer functioning because these people have a right to gain access to do their shopping and things of that sort. This looks to be like a gas station, restaurant, maybe even a old general store. And it looks like attached to it may have been at some point RV parking or back in the day you would have trailers that you would haul behind your cars. That looks like an old water tank up there. Look at that fire engine. Pretty amazing out here in the middle of nowhere on a closed or abandoned road. There is still a lot of activity. This stretch of abandoned Route 66 from Mountain Springs Road to Amboy Crater is about 60 miles. And I lost count of the bridges, but there's like seven or so bridges that are out. But as you can see, the roads are graded that go around those bridges and any vehicle can go through there. It's, it's, it's not a hard trek at all. Looking at this little gem coming up, I bet you that was probably a gas station at one point. Let's go check it out. I think my call for it being an old gas station and probably repair shop is correct because there's the island where the gas pumps stood. Wow, pretty amazing. On previous trips through this area of Route 66, I noticed two lion statues just off the road in the middle of the desert. So on this trek, I'm gonna stop and check them out. Part lion and part dog, the legendary Foo Dogs have a reputation for protecting the land and the people where they reside. Two enormous white marble specimens weighing thousands of pounds can be found positioned along Route 66 just east of Amboy, California. No one's sure when or why they were placed here. You sure find some strange things in the middle of the desert, like what is that thing? The faded sign gave no clues. Crazy stuff out here. Coming up here, it looks like another long forgotten gas station. This area is fenced off. When the areas are fenced off, I don't go near them. And it does help. Look, there's hardly no graffiti like the other places. Oh, check out the sign. This used to be the Road Runners Retreat and restaurant. As we approach the once thriving town of Amboy, California, if you look on the left, you'll see Amboy Crater. Amboy is located in the Mojave Desert. It's west of Needles and east of Ludlow, just off historic Route 66. It's roughly 60 miles northeast of 29 Palms. As of 2020, the town's business district still contained a post office, historic restaurant slash motel, and the Route 66 tour shop, operated by the town's population of four people. Amboy was once a major stop along famous Route 66 until the opening of Interstate 40 to the north in 1973. Amboy is home to Roy's Motel and Cafe, a Route 66 landmark. Amboy had its own shoe tree. At one point, the tree finally fell down from the weight of the shoes, so I think someone put up this pole as a replacement. Just past the shoe tree pole is St. Raymond's Church. It was dedicated March 8, 1951. The church was designed to seat about 100 people. An estimated 40 Catholic families lived in the region. Most of the followers worked on the railroads or the nearby salt mines. The first priest there was Reverend Patrick Malone, who leased an old house in town as his living quarters and as a temporary chapel, mass was held there with Sunday services 6 and 8 a.m. 
Roy Crow, owner of many properties in Amboy, including the iconic Roy's, donated the land for the St. Raymond Church. Financial help to build the church came from the Catholic Extension Society in Chicago. The desert had taken its toll on the building, and in 2013, the steeple fell off, but it was replaced in 2016. The Reverend Leo Hanley oversaw the church's completion. Hanley reportedly was discouraged by the challenges facing the parish, mostly financial. But he didn't give up. I saw those children and their great need. I did not want to renege and let them down, he said. Lack of money dodged the church for years. Hanley returned to Chicago almost every year to conduct fundraising. The parish saw a total of 12 priests when the church was open. St. Michael's Mission in nearby Ludlow, California also was a part of the parish. St. Raymond's Church closed August 3, 1970 and the property was returned to Crowell in 1981. The original Amboy School was a two-room building located by the railroad tracks. In the late 50s, this new school was built. In 1991, there was a total of 22 students attending the school. They spanned from kindergarten through grade eight. It closed in 1999 when the last of the students moved away. Adjacent to the Amboy School is the famous Roy's Motel and Cafe. It was the only gasoline food and lodging stop for miles around in that part of the Eastern Mojave. Well known for its retro future architect and even more famous sign. It's super amazing that the motel is left wide open so you can just walk in and take a step back in time. In 1938, Roy Crow opened Roy's as a service station on Route 66 in Amboy. Roy, together with his wife Velma, expanded the business, keeping it open 24 hours a day and adding the motel. The complex was so busy during summer vacation time that classified ads were placed in other states to bring employees. Let's check out the motel lobby. The lobby isn't open to public, but with those huge retro style glass windows, we can take a great look inside. Although Amboy was first settled in 1858, the town was not established until 1883. Lewis Kingman, a locating engineer for the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad, created the town as the first of a series of alphabetical railroad stations that were to be constructed across the Mojave Desert. In 1926, Amboy became a boon town after the opening of U.S. Route 66. In 1938, Roy's Motel and Cafe opened and prospered due to its isolated location on the route. By 1940, Amboy's population had increased to 65. Its growth was tied not only to tourists, but also to the Santa Fe Railroad, over which freight trains still run today between Kingman, Arizona and the BNSF Railway, Barstow, California Yard. Part of the 1986 film The Hitcher was filmed in Amboy. Roy's was the setting for a 1999 television commercial for Q West Communications. It was also used in Enrique Iglesias' music video Hero and the film Live Evil. When I was leaving Roy's right across the street is the Amboy Post Office, which is still functioning. As I got back on Route 66, off to my left, I saw something gold and shiny. So we had to go investigate it. It looks like this is another statue of many interesting public works of art located around the desert. It's a shiny golden statue of the Enlightened One. Travelers first noticed his appearance sometime around 2020. Passer buyers will often leave items around the statue perhaps an offering for safe travels. It looks to be made of cement with a gold plastic casing. Some of the items laying around it, which was kind of cool, was this harmonica. <laughs> anyway, what a cool sight in the middle of nowhere. And you can kind of see Amboy is right in the background there as we leave. 
No sooner than we get back on Route 66, not even a quarter mile down the road, we get to stop and wait for a train. And this is what the city of Amboy was all about. The Amboy Crater is about two and a half miles from the town of Amboy. It's quite a place to see. I've been here a few times, but I've never hiked to the crater. And that's what this trip is all about. When I say hiked, I mean ride the e-bike to the base of the crater. And here we are, Amboy Crater National Natural Landmark. On previous visits, I would read this sign and that would pretty much deter me from hiking to the crater. But let's hop on Zach and head on over to the crater base and I'll explain. The things to know before you go sign. During the summer months or windy conditions, hiking to the rim is not recommended. There's an old scar on the face of the crater where many people hiked or tried to drive ATVs up the crater. This is not a trail and is very dangerous. Do not use. Remember to bring a hat, use sunscreen, sturdy shoes, and bring plenty of water. Watch out for snakes and other desert wildlife along the trail. Regular desert precautions apply here. Being alert for rattlesnakes and old military explosives. Okay, so in 100 plus degree weather, yeah, I decided I'd opt out. But now that we got Zach and we're heading over, this should make it a lot more comfortable and a lot quicker. There were a few spots where the lava flow crossed the hiking path, or I should say the hiking path crossed the lava flow, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Anyway, those minor obstacles were minute compared to the three plus hours recommended round trip time in this desert heat. In case you're wondering, that bump out there in the distance is the Amboy Crater. Here's an overview of where we are and where we're going. There's Route 66 and the parking lot. This is the ADA Ramada Overlook for viewing, which gives you a straight on shot of the crater. What you can't see from this vantage point is the west or the right side of the crater had a huge blowout or breach as they call it. Leading into the breach, while it's not visible from the road, where lava burst through the newly formed fragile cone, allowing easy access via a gentle sloping path into the cone's center. There is another crater in the area, and it's called Pisda. It is located near Highway 40, just west of the city of Amboy. Because of quarry operations, it is not as well preserved as Amboy Crater. Amboy Crater is formed of ash and cylinders. It is 250 feet high and 1,500 feet in diameter. It is situated in one of the youngest volcanic fields in the United States. The cylinder cone is estimated to be 79,000 years old, plus or minus 5,000 years. And it was formed in layers of vesicular pahoehoe during the Pleistocene geological period. Amboy Crater is 944 feet above sea level and about 250 feet above the surrounding basalt lava plains, which we're passing through at this moment. The scenic and solitary Amboy Crater was popular site and a stop for travelers on US Route 66 in California before the opening of Interstate 40 in 1973. Reaching the breach, I parked Zach and started hiking up this gentle sloping path. Whomever wrote that verbiage from the National Park System of a gentle sloping path obviously has never hiked here. A better way to describe the trail 
is a lot of broken shell, miniature little lava rocks, very tiny. It's almost like you're walking on marbles. Here is a sample, close up. Once you enter the crater, just follow the path towards the center. You'll find that you go up and down little hills and into different calderas. What a hike. And looking at this, well, you think we made it. Not so fast, Turbo. We still have to hike over that last ridge to reach the center. I wonder how many people get just this far and think they've accomplished hiking the Amboy Crater. But let me tell you, I'm glad I continued on because this is what I found in the main caldera. I wonder what that is. A labyrinth? A spirit circle? Or is it a beacon for aliens to land? I guess we'll never know. Remember, it's 1,500 feet in diameter, and volcanologists have claimed that they can tell there was four distinct eruptions. The interior of the Amboy Crater has a solidified lava lake. The most recent eruption was approximately 10,000 years ago. Here is a view of the breach where we entered the crater. My one piece of advice if you ever take this trek is make sure you hike completely across the interior. Here's an aerial shot of the Amboy Crater and this is the path where we entered the breach. And this is the area where the Labyrinth Spirit Circle Alien Beacon is located. Hiking down the trail to the desert floor below, it's fascinating to see the lava field just as far as you can see. It must have been one heck of an explosion to breach the side like it did. Hopping back on Zach, we head on back towards the trailhead and the parking lot. Other than a stretch of US Route 66 in New Mexico, Amboy Crater is one of just a few extinct volcanoes along the entire route. So generations of U.S. Route 66 travelers from the 1920s through the 1960s could boast that they had climbed a real volcano. Visits decreased after Interstate 40 opened, but have increased in recent years with the nearby Mitchell Caverns, Mojave National Preserve, and the renewed historical tourism interest in Old Route 66. Amboy Crater was designated a National Natural Landmark in 1973 and is recognized for its visual and geological importance. Amboy Crater is an example of a very symmetrical volcano cylinder cone. There is a breach on the west side, as we saw, of the crater where basaltic lava poured out over the vast area of the 24 square miles, which contains lava lakes collapsed lava tubes, and sinks. The crater lies about halfway between Barstow and Needles, about 66 miles in each direction. Lava fields and the lava rocks can be found up to 24 miles away. Amboy Crater was used as a location in the 1959 movie Journey to the Center of the Earth, with matte paintings used to alter the shape of the cone and place it within the landscape of Iceland. Fires were set inside the crater to simulate a volcanic eruption. Amboy Crater was also featured in the Viceland Network show Abandoned and in HBO's From the Earth to the Moon Apollo 15 episode. Amboy Crater has also been used for astronaut training as well as a volcanic field outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. If you ever wondered what was inside Amboy Crater, well now you know. I know it was exciting for me. I've been there three or four times and I've always wanted to go inside, but that three and a half hour round trip walking, hiking was just not in me, especially in the triple digit desert heat. Now it's time to head on out and find a cool camping place for the night. But first, 
we have to make a quick stop up ahead. As you know, you find the craziest things out in the middle of the desert. Well, if you ever wondered where the end of the world is, well, here it is. <laughs> it's about halfway between Amboy City and 29 Palms. But I think it almost was the end of the world for these tourists. They got stuck looking at that sign. We had to pull them out. Oh my goodness. That sugar Sam will get you every time. I guess now I can honestly say I've seen and been to the end of the world. <laughs> Those tourists were really nice. They were from Colorado with their little baby daughter. And they were traveling in their homemade tiny home. And it was four wheel drive, but they failed to air down before hitting that soft sugar sand. Well, the sun is setting low in the sky. We gotta find me a camping spot. Not far from 29 Palms is some dispersed camping on BLM land. So we found ourselves a nice spot and set up camp for the night. I've had this Mavic Mini for a while now, but get frustrated with it because of the such a short battery life. So I did bring it and started playing with it again. So this is my third time using it. I only crashed once. <laughs> it just takes an hour or two to charge up the battery in between the five or 10 minutes you get. So I think I'm gonna invest in extra batteries and start doing this more because it does give some pretty cool shots. Hey, a successful landing. Woohoo! <laughs> After a recharge, I took it up at dusk. Well, it's almost dark, but apparently the camera is not that great at night. But it was fun giving it a shot. Hey, Mom, I love those little packets you put in the fire that turns it all blue and green. Pretty cool. Thank you so much. For those of you who know me, you'll understand what's going on here. <laughs> There's nothing like getting out of the city to actually see the night sky. It's pretty fascinating. You can't believe the shooting stars, the airplanes and things going by. It is just something else. Only out in the desert or in dark areas far away from the cities can you experience that. Well, that's it for this trip. Love you, Mom.